Hello again, everybody. This is Joseph with another tutorial about Toyotas. And as I received of quite a few emails about, again, how to interpret, how to read schematics, where, where the starting point is. To answer that question, it's a complex question, but the answer is you have to start from the purpose of what you're looking for, the objective. So let's say, in this instance, I have a diagram, theft deterrence system. If I'm looking for a fuse, let's say I'm looking, I'm troubleshooting, I'm saying, okay, fuel pump doesn't start. I'm going to look for a fuse. I'm going to concentrate on this area. I'm going to start from here, maybe from B+, plus, which is here, and go to the fuses until I find the proper one. However, let's say your car is alarmed, it's activated. In the middle of the night, your car alarm goes off. You come back in the morning, the alarm is, is on. Somebody tried to do something to your car. Either vandalize it by breaking the windows or trying to unlock the doors or trying to put uh, a generic key, so to say, inside the, the, the ignition to start it. Theft return system will be on. Now, if I'm looking to troubleshoot, as I said before, I concentrate on main components. Main components in this instance is the alarm is, off, is on. The theft deterrent system has been activated. What do I concentrate on? Am I going to concentrate on the fuses? The fuses has nothing to do with it. The problem is, the main components is, I have to concentrate on, first of all, understanding the theft deterrent ECU, electronic control unit. Now, there are inputs and to a theft deterrent system. And there are inputs over here, as I draw it over here. And you can say the output of it is the alarm. Or in this case, as you see, it says, we look at the symbol and it says a horn. This is the symbol for horn. If not, we're not sure of it, this is Toyota. It even tells you theft deterrent horn, if you're not aware of it. And this horn obviously has been on, telling us that Someone tried to do something to the car. Now, before understanding something, as I said, you, you focus on main components. Where to start interpreting, analyzing the, the diagram. Am I going to start from here, from the ignition switch? Am I going to start from the B plus that's feeding it? Now, I have to see if the alarm is on. That means, obviously, that... B plus is being fed to it. This is B1. This is B2. This is B plus. Current flowing through here as I have highlighted with the orange arrows. Now, there's another B plus going over here. Going through only this one. This fuse. This is a fuse. Now, the difference, somebody asked me, a fusible link are two wires soldered together and to melt when the current rating has been exceeded, just like a fuse. The symbols are a little different. This is more thicker, more wavier, and this is more thinner. Both have the same purpose. So B plus is going in here through a, through a ignition switch. Another B plus is going through here. Another B plus is going through here. So it actually has three sources of possible B pluses battery voltage to get. However, that's not our problem. Problem is horn is blasting away. So someone tried to vandalize or get into the car. In order to do that, this theft return system has inputs and it's monitoring, so to say inputs. When I mean inputs, I mean, as you see over here, hopefully you can see it. Luggage, luggage compartment light switch goes on when, when you turn on or you, 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 you access the luggage compartment, the truck compartment in your car. The light goes on. Now, all other doors, unlocked and doors in the front, in the rear, are, are, are being monitored by this theft return unit. And these, you could say, these go to these locations, door key, lock, and unlock switch, goes to the switches. As you can see, this is right, 
these are for the right, this is for the front right, this is for the front right, this is for the left and the right, goes to the switches to detect if anything has been tampered with is the, is the correct word. As well as the front left over here, door unlock detection, luggage compartment again, door key unlock switch, somebody tried to, to tamper with that switch, try to unlock it, Trouble, somebody tried to unlock the, the door courtesy, the door courtesy in the front, all these things are being monitored, the luggage compartment, also, so the trunk of the car is, is being monitored to see if it's been tampered with, the switches, the, the, the windows, if somebody tried to break into the window, all these things are being monitored. So you can say these go to these locations, to, the, to these electrical uh, switches, or the doors, the front, the rear, whatever the case being, and it, it, tell, it gives it input or data, hey, this is being tampered with while I activated the theft deterrent system. Before you leave, after you leave the car, by your transponder or your key fold, you activate the system. Okay, so now it's in monitoring mode. That means any action that will be that will be will be resulted from somebody trying to tamper. This alarm will will detect it, and you will not be able to start the engine. So if somebody tried to tamper with it, he'll put the key in. Of course, it won't have the right key. Turn it on to ignition. This gets a this gets a B plus from this one, right? But his key doesn't have a chip or the right code compared to the code that this is looking for. This is this has a code in it, and the key has a code in it. It's try it makes to com it compares both to make sure that they are similar, matching. Then it will allow you to crank the engine. So if you have a problem with your key code meaning it's damage or something like that, it will not allow you to start cranking the engine. So that's that. So all these inputs to the say are being detected. Also, in some cars you have the fuel lid and luggage compartment door opener that where, where electronically you can open it, the fuel lid, the fuel cover from inside the car. Right? We don't have to go outside and do it manually. And the luggage compartment door also, you have a switch from inside. And, of course, the one from outside. Now, let's say somebody tried to tamper with these things from outside. That's input to this, telling it, hey, you know what? Somebody tried to do this. I'm activated. The theft deterrent system is activated. The guy goes and he tries to put the key in again. Tries to put the key in. No, you can't start the engine. Let's take it a step further. How does this try to stop the engine? As you can see over here, as I put it in green, ECM. ECM is the computer. When everything is, is working right or not correctly, when this, is being, this was activated by the driver going out of the car, and somebody tried to vandalize it, either by trying to break the door or trying to break the trunk, it detects the switches. It shuts this off. When he tries to start it, it doesn't let it start. But also, there's a signal that goes to the, the computer. The computer is actually what starts the car. As I made so many videos, the computer has... You, you have, in order to start the car, you have to start, obviously, pressure to through the fuel system, and through the fuel injectors, through the fuel pump. The fuel pump allows that, the pressure to build, and it allows to send fuel to the injectors by giving, the computer gives the injectors a ground, toggling it on and off, which turns on the fuel injectors on and off by a ground from the computer. This is what allows the car to crank the engine before the, after obviously the starter has has engaged the flywheel and the engine.
You need that. You need obviously the fuel pressure and the fuel. So it allows the fuel pressure relay to be activated. There's a relay that turns on electrically the re the, the the fuel pump. As I made a video about that recently. This is what allows the engine to crank. If this person who who broke into your into your Lexus or your Camry or similar make or model broke into it, opened the door, obviously forced the lock or tried a screwdriver, whatever he did, puts the key in here, right? Tries to put this in. This is now in the mode when he try when you try to put this in, this is now in ignition. This is closed. So you have B plus going through here, through here. Correct? Now, as you see over here, when you have the B plus going through here, you obviously you have voltage also going through the starter to start it. However, the engine and all these things also, the engine is being monitored by the ECM when to start it. So therefore, he cranks it, right? You get current going through the starter to the solenoids. Try to start the, 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 the starter motor. Starts cranking the engine. The engine has to turn on the relay. The relay then goes, is being grounded. One side of the relay is B+, plus, the other one is, is ground. It, the, the computer turns it on. And says, okay, now, if it's if it's the actual driver, if the keys com are compared and the and the the codes, the chips compare with the correct codes, then the, this deterrent system will say, okay, let me send a signal to the ECM. Start the start the computer. The computer will ground the relay, and that will allow the fuel motor the fuel pump, as we call it, to start. As I made a video on that I just spoke about. You'll understand that fully when you see the videos. So in other words, this theft deterrent system can be a nuisance also when it's not operating correctly, either because the battery is low on, in the car, or obviously your key fold battery, or someone tried to uh, tamper with it and it doesn't let you start the car. It's a nuisance. You could put the key in the door, try to, to turn it back and forth a few times. That'll tell it that you have the least the right key. You could try to uh, 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 obviously put the, the battery, try to get the correct voltage to that. So you could turn it on to some, in some cars, you could turn it on to on, on mode, accessories, leave it on. For, for, for a, a while let it reset itself you can you could put the door if the if the the windows have been tampered with and they were opened you could close the windows put it in the on position try to reset it depending on the making the model obviously however if you lose the if you lose the battery the guy tries to get in first of all even if he has a chance to get the right key, he won't start anyway. The battery is low, so he won't crack. No, he won't crank. No, no engine, no starter. So therefore, these are inputs, and these are inputs. But when you have a theft turn system, or you're interpreting something, as you saw when I go to the to, to the schematic, I'm not worried about fuses. I'm not worried about right now the ignition switch. I'm worried about this the theft turn system, electronic control unit. And this is an output to the ECM. As you see over here also, engine hood courtesy switch. There's a switch, obviously, for the, for the hood. If somebody tries to tamper with that, tries to pick up the hood by the switch, this information is being given over here and tell, and tell it, uh-oh, somebody's trying to do something. Right? In order to do that, he had to get into the door through the door and then he tries to do something to try to turn on the car this theft deterrent system will will look at all these inputs as i have explained and said okay i am activated somebody's trying to do something through the doors while i am activated then the light the led will go red 
Usually it's green. Otherwise it'll go red, meaning something was tampered with. And the alarm will go off. So when I'm looking at the, at the at schematic of the diagram, am I concerned with the horn? No, that's just uh, the output of this, the result of something. The cause is somebody tampered with it. The result of that cause is this is being alarm. This is going on, telling me somebody tampered with it. So as I had before one time with a customer, it wasn't the theft deterrent system. It was actually this connector over here that went to the ECM that did not turn it on. We have to tell the ECM, yes, it's been deactivated. When we have the correct key, it's been deactivated. Now start the ECM. Well, the ECM didn't allow the fuel pump to go on. There was a problem over here. So it's not that easy. And then when you look at the abbreviations, it's not really a big concern what the abbreviations stand for. As you can see. As you can see there, the pin numbers, and the four, 9, 8, all these things, and the colors of the wires. So yellow, whatever, whatever the color is, red, green. The most important is there is current flowing from here. Once this is deactivated by your remote or your transponder or your key foil, then you go, you turn on the key, it matches it matches it so if you again if your key fob has been damaged or the key in it is is low it will not work it has to compare it the secure almost like a security code it goes and it compares it once once that is is is, is comparable and they are similar current now flows through this telling this okay everything is good the keys match Nothing has been broken into. I've no information that the trunk has been, trunk switch has been tampered with. The, the doors have been tampered with. No reason to put the, the, the alarm on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow a signal to go to the, to the computer to turn on the fuel pump. And that's what happens. Like I said, troubleshooting. Make sure your key fob is, is correct with the battery. Make sure it's not damaged. Make sure, like I said, try to reset it by putting on the windows that have been tampered with, open, put it, leaving on the on position for a while, or depending on the make and model. However, interpreting an entire, a diagram as I saw, I had nothing to do with here. I didn't worry about this. I didn't worry about the alarm going off. I go right to here to see what, this is a main component. This is what I'm concentrating on. So, as m many videos have said, you start from the starting point of B plus all the time. No, that's not true. Starting from the battery to this will not help me. All I'm looking is B plus through a fusible link, through a fuse, going through this. What does that tell me? That doesn't tell me anything. My alarm is on. That doesn't tell me anything. As soon as I go to this, the main component of theft turn system, and I look at all these things. I say, okay, you know what? That means somebody tampered with the door, somebody with the with the switches, somebody tampered maybe with the with the luggage compartment door, the fuel lid. Somebody tampered with that. Maybe with the engine hood courtesy switch. All this is information that it's monitoring. And this is the output. The inputs. The output. This is the output. I put a draw arrow to it. And also, these are also inputs from head head relay, headlamp, from horn relay, from tail, tail light relay. All these things are inputs. As you can see, horn, head, like I said, start from what you're looking for, the objective. Don't always start from B+. Plus. That does not help me in this case. So... Please subscribe to my channel, Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph. My other one, Joe Electronic Schematics. You'll find about transistors, amplifiers, and much more diagnosing about Chevy schematics. And hopefully some troubleshooting tips that will help you. Because in life, you cannot just say everything is the fuse. You have to be able to diagnose once in a while and say, you know what? It might be a switch. Might be a relay. Remember, the relay is not able to get access unless you have an inserter and you can measure the pins. So if you find, if this is the relay and I have no access to it because it's inside, obviously, 
It's inside. The pins are inside. I have no access to it. You can either bypass it or let me find another place that it goes to. So if this is a relay, the coil, and I want to get to this relay, I can come to this fuse. This fuse is connecting to this. That means it's the same point. So if I have no access here, as you do in many components in, in, in automotive, let me see where it's connected and go to that point because it's the same point as this. If I go to after the relay and I see I don't have 12 volts, then I have to backtrack on the schematic and say, okay, where did I lose it? Maybe this wire is broken. So I had it on this side of the fuse, but I went to when I went to one side of the relay and then the other side, I lost it. I lost the 12 volts on the other side. I, then I have to backtrack in the schematic and say, let me go to one side of the relay. I don't have it here, but I have 12 volts over here. So, if I draw it in for you, I have 12 volts here, right? And then I go over here to measure. This is the relay, for example. Relay. I go over here. How much am I supposed to measure? 12 volts here, 12 volts here. This is the same line. I come over here and I measure zero volts. Uh-oh, there's a problem. Let me go over here. How much should I measure over here? 12 volts. But I don't measure 12 volts. I measure zero volts that means this line is broken the the the, the hard wiring or the, or the connector the wire that's how you go about it but remember if i can't get access to one point if i don't have access let's say to this point i look at where it's connected to let me get to this point or maybe even this point okay Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Like I said, part of analyzing schematics is focusing on your objective, what the purpose is, and going to main components. That's where you start. It's your starting point, not from the fuses all the time. That's a misconception, unfortunately. Thanks for watching.